أعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam Allah Azza wa Jal has emphasized in the Quran the importance of our hearts and that we give a lot of attention to the heart Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran وَبَاطِنَة, to leave off and abandon sins those sins that are apparent and those sins which are baltin, internal sins the sins of the heart the jealousy that one may have the envy that one harbors the malice that one may have in their hearts and the other diseases of the heart Allah Azza wa is telling us to leave off all of those sins a lot of times when we think about the major sins of Islam, we think about somebody committing zina or consuming riba or backbiting and so on. And we think about those sins that are related to our limbs and the external sins. But the sins of the heart are just as important, if not more important, because no one is going to be saved. No one is going to attain salvation without having a pure and sound heart. And nobody is really going to enjoy their existence in this world without a sound heart. So Islam emphasizes this matter of the heart, and this should be emphasized. This is something that you, when you go to different masajid, not just here, not just every masjid, you should be hearing someone talking about the heart. And if, if that is something that you hear repeatedly, then that's not a problem. Because the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when he talked about the halal and the haram, which is the fiqh of Islam, the Prophet ﷺ ended that hadith by saying, Ada in the fil jasadi mudra. Ida salahat salah al jasadu kullu. Wa ida fasadat fasada al jasadu kulluhu. Allah wa hi al qalb. The Prophet ﷺ said that in your body there is a mudra, like a lump, a morsel of flesh. If it is pure, sound, righteous, then the rest of the body is going to be sound. The health of the body comes from the health of this lump that is inside of you. But if that lump, if that morsel, that mudra is corrupt, it's not intact, it's not healthy, then the rest of the body is also not going to be healthy. And that is the heart, the Prophet ﷺ said. And so, mashallah, and he, you can just look around and not just in society as a whole, but you can look into the, at some of the masajid and you go in and you see people, that, mashallah, they give a lot of care to their body, right? They go to the gym every day, they lift an hour, two hours. Uh, maybe they're running marathons, mashallah. And they give a lot of attention to how they look. They give a lot of attention to how they look. Some of us spend half hour, hour in the mirror every day, putting makeup on and so on and so forth. Because we're very concerned about how we look externally. Do we give the same care to our hearts? Is the question. The Prophet said, Inna Allah la yanduru ila amwalikum wa la ila suwarikum wa la kin yandur ila kulubikum wa a'malikum. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet was reported to have said that Allah does not look at your wealth. Some of us, subhanAllah, depending on what kind of industry you're in, Every single day, multiple times a day, you're checking certain apps. Because you want to see how your wealth is growing or decreasing or whatever. Allah doesn't look at your wealth. And He doesn't look at your outer appearances. That is what we put so much attention on. He doesn't look at your outer appearances. But He looks to your hearts and He looks to your deeds. And even Allah Azza wa Jal looking at your deeds goes back to your heart. Because Al-A'mal, the deeds that Allah Azza wa Jal looks at, bin niyat. 
They're based on the intention, and that intention is your heart. It's in your heart. So giving that attention to your heart is very important as a Muslim. And you can think about somebody right now who goes and buys hand sanitizer down the street at Rite Aid, right? Uh, 50 cents. They get, a, they get a small thing of hand sanitizer. And then they wrap it in a really big box. The box costs more than the, the hand sanitizer. And then they wrap it elaborately with all of this, you know, uh, uh, nice uh, wrapping paper. And they put a bow around it. And it costs them a lot of time and money just the, the, the present, the, the, the presentation of it, right? And they bring it to you and they say, mashallah, I just wanted to give you a gift. And you're looking at this thing. And then you open it. It's a 50 cent hand sanitizer. Well, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We pay so much attention to our bodies and the outer external and all of this other stuff. And don't give any attention to your heart. It's a 50 cent gift. You know, you haven't done much. If you're not paying attention to your heart and everything, and, and this creeps also into our bed. It's not a bad thing. But you see people, they're very particular about how they raise their hands. So Allahu Akbar, making sure it's right in line with their chest. Right in line with the bottom of the ears. Allah, and they give all of this attention. They make sure that their fingers are spaced out just right. And they look at all of these external aspects of the sunnah of the Prophet, which is important. Nobody's downplaying or belittling the sunnah of the Prophet. But are we giving the same attention to making sure that our hearts are like the heart of a Nabi, Al Mustafa? Do we give that same attention? And so this is the point here. Because our salvation depends on it. And so we're going to focus, inshallah, to add a, or, or give some attention to an ayah in the Quran or a few ayahs in the Quran from the dua of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. When Allah Azza wa explains his dua or, or he, he mentions his dua in detail in Surah uh, Shu'ara, at the end of that dua, Ibrahim says, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ And don't, he's, he's asking Allah Azza wa Jal, yani, please, don't disgrace me on that day when everybody is resurrected. وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On that day, when children, when your sons, and your wealth will be of no avail. It's not going to benefit anybody. That doesn't benefit anybody on that day. Except for the one who comes to Allah with a heart that is salim. Pure and sound and healthy. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what a qalb salim is. Because we need to understand what we're reading in the Quran. Quran, yes, it is read for blessings and hasanat and barakah. But Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this Quran to ponder it. So that we ponder over its verses. Ibrahim alayhi salam is asking Allah Azza wa Jal for him not to be disgraced on that day. Whatever happens in this life happens in this life. Subhanallah. Whatever happens, happens. It's temporary. It's going to be done. But the next one is really long. In fact, it's forever. And so he's saying, don't disgrace me. On that day when we're all resurrected. All of the things, you know, when you think about, subhanAllah, especially as a parent, and I know some of you are not there yet, but you'll understand this when you become, when you get there that day, and look at your parents. The time that we spend as parents on making money and our children probably consume the majority of your waking hours. Like if you think about it. I mean, if you sleep somewhere from six to eight hours a day, and then you look at the rest of your time, the, the other 16 hours, there's a large portion of that that is spent doing two things. Trying to make money, trying to make sure that your kids are okay. Allah is, is telling us here in this ayah that none of that matters. The majority of that time that you're spending it's not going to benefit you on Yom al qiyamah unless you come to Allah with a qalb that is salim, with a heart that is salim. So what does that mean? What is a heart that is salim? And how do we get there? That's what we'll spend the rest of the time uh, in today's khutbah bi ta'ala talking about. So, the qalb that is salim, the heart that is salim. What does that mean? Well, salim, right, is the opposite here of marid, which means that it's sick, Okay. 
or it's unhealthy. So when we say salim, we means that it, it means that it is salim ala dawam. And salim means to be free of certain things. So Allah here is telling us that this heart actually has to be empty. It has to be free of certain things so that it can accept the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, if it's filled up, even if something good comes to it, it's not going to accept it. I mean, you, you, I mean even if, if you had a glass and it was filled with dirty water, I mean, you can't pour clean water. It has to be free of those things. It has to be free of the filth that is in it so that it can be, that it can be healthy. So Allah is describing this heart as being salim. It is sound because it is free of certain things. And the, the scholars of Islam mention many different things, but it can be summed up. It can be summed up in the following. Two things, two major things. The first is that the heart is free from every shahwa. From every shahwa. Meaning, uh, your, your base and carnal desires that go against that go against the commands and prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is telling you to do something, but you don't feel like it. Or Allah is telling you to stay away from something, but you really want to do that thing. This is the shahwa that your heart has to be free from. And we'll talk about how you get there. Because we all have, as human beings, we all have shahwa, we all have appetites and desires. But if those desires and appetites go against the command of Allah or we go beyond the limits that Allah has set to uh, lawfully fulfill those appetites, then we have succumbed to that shahwa and our hearts become sick uh, in proportion to our following of those shahwat. And then the second thing is it has to be free. Of every shubha to aridu khabar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the heart has to be uh, pure or purified from any doubts that you may have that cause you to oppose and contradict what Allah Azza wa Jalla has informed us of. And that's, that's easier said than done. Some people, some of us, we may worry about our next meal, where it's going to come from. Or we have a lot of time we think about what's going to happen in retirement. How am, I going to, how am I going to earn a living? Where am I going to live and what am I going to eat? And how am I going to take care of this and how am I going to take care of that? Well, ma'am and deb, there's nothing that walks upon this earth. Illa ala Allahi rizquha. Allah told us that in the Quran. Except that it is upon Allah to provide for it. And we know as Muslims that Allah is ar razaq that he is the one who will provide. So if we spend all of this time, over time, to the point that we become anxious, musab bilham, and we just can't even function because all we can think about is where our provisions are going to come from. That's actually a shubha. That's actually a shubha. It's a doubt that we have, and we don't really believe fully that Allah is going to provide for us. We don't believe fully that if we just do those things that Allah told us to do, then we're going to be okay. And so there is a deficiency in our tawakkul that is actually because of a shubha, of a doubt that we have. And there are multiple examples of this. So the heart has to be free of these shahawat, right, and shubuhat that will cause it to go against the commands and prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that cause it to doubt what Allah azza wa jal has informed us of in the Quran or upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sunnah. The heart that is salim, brothers and sisters in Islam must also be free of any ill will and malice towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So envy and jealousy and spite and all of these things have to the heart has to be free of these things in order to taste the sweetness of having a qalb that is salim. And so to sum that up, we have to embody what Allah Azza wa tells us in the beginning of Surah Al-Hujurat, the 49th chapter. 
in the Quran, Allah Azawajal says, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa rasuli. O you who believe, do not put yourselves in front of, don't give yourself preference over Allah and his messenger. Some of these salaf said in explaining this ayah, that means that you don't do anything until you know that Allah Azawajal has commanded that thing be done or that the Prophet والسلام, permitted that that action be done. And you don't say anything that opposes the book of Allah or the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and you don't believe anything that opposes the Quran, the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام. Don't put yourself before Allah and his messenger. If you do, you will not have a heart that is salim. So for every action, for every action that we do, in order for us to know that our hearts are pure, we have to ask ourselves two things, and these two things will be written. Lima wa kaif. Why did you do that action, and how did you do that action? Why did you do that action is a question of what is it? What was the catalyst for you doing what you've done? We'll talk a little bit about, more about this when we talk about how do we get a qalb that is salim. How do we make sure that our hearts are pure? But I want you to understand this point now. Everything that you do, there's, there's a question that is being answered. And it is written in your record of deeds. And you will stand before, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, ask that, and be asked that question. Why is it that you've done what you did? What was the catalyst? Is it because you were trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or were you looking for some worldly gain? Did you do something because you wanted the people to praise you? Did you do something because you were scared that if you didn't do it, that they would speak evil of you and you're scared of them talking about you? Did you do it to push away some worldly harm that you thought may be coming to you at the expense of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are the questions that you have to ask yourself before you do an action. And the second thing is, how did you perform that action? Was it something that was according to the sunnah of the Prophet, or did you just make it up from thin air? Or are you following somebody other than the Prophet, which is important, because in order for your heart to be salim, it cannot be attached to any other guide other than Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if a person's heart is attached in terms of its guidance, its role model, to the point that they will follow somebody else, even though they know that that contradicts the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, then that person does not have a qalb that is salim. It does not have a pure and sound heart. In the second part of the khutbah, we're going to talk about the steps that we can take, inshaAllah ta'ala, to attain a salim heart, because a salim heart is necessary for salvation, to repeat that dua of Ibrahim, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ Do not disgrace me. Ya Rabbi, don't disgrace me on that day when everyone is resurrected. The day when children and wealth will be of no avail. Think about that. The majority of our time is not going to benefit us. Your children and your wealth of no avail, except for the one who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound and pure salim heart. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make our hearts salim. Aqulu kuli yada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru inna hu huwa al-ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulihi al-mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ma ba'd. The question that we need to answer is how do I get there? How do I get to the point where my heart is salim? And the first thing that we have to do is al-isti'anatu billahi wa dua is that we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that we're seeking his assistance in having a pure heart and making dua for our hearts. So a lot of times we, we'll make du'as, but our du'as are for, you know, we, we're asking Allah for the things that we want in this dunya. Sometimes we ask Allah for Jannah to save us from the fire. Nah, those things are important, especially if the Prophet ﷺ taught us to make those du'as. But he also taught us to make du'a for our hearts. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ told Shaddad ibn Aus, one of his companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ya Shaddad ibn Aus. إذا اكتنز الناس الذهب والفضة فاكتنز أنت هؤلاء الكلمات If you see people going out and they're trying to hoard and, and, and gather up gold and silver, you gather these words. And he taught him a dua. And from that dua, 
is Allahumma in yas'aluka qalban saliman wa lisanan sadiqa. Oh Allah, I ask you for a heart that is salim. Qalban saliman wa lisanan sadiqa. And a truthful tongue. That's a dua that we should make. Put it in your sujood. Make it before the taslim. When you're in tashahud. When you're in that position. Make it in the last third of the night. Between the adhan and the iqamah. When it's raining outside. Allahumma in yas'aluka qalban saliman wa lisanan sadiqa. Oh Allah, I ask you for a heart that is salim. That is pure and sound. And I ask you for a truthful tongue. And from the dua of the believers that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ And the part of this dua is, Oh Allah, don't allow our hearts to stray after you have guided us. Don't allow our what? Our hearts that focus on the heart. And the dua that Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make the most when he was with her. Ya muqallib al-qulub. Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O turner of the hearts, make my heart firm on your deen. So this, this concern with our hearts is important. And it's in the du'as that Allah Azza wa Jal has taught us in the Quran and that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us in his sunnah. So the first pathway, the first thing that we need to do in order to have a heart that is salim is to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The second thing is muhasabatun nafs. And it is to be constantly uh, taking account of yourself, that introspection, thinking about your heart, thinking about why you do what you do, asking yourself, is this, is this something that the Prophet wasallam did or taught us to do? And thinking about these things is, is so important. And Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, taqullah, wal tamdu nafsu ma qaddamat li ghadin wa taqullah. Allah Azza wa Jal tells in the Quran to fear, fear him, to have be, be mindful of him, to be conscious of him. And he says, look forth to what you put for tomorrow. What are, what are you putting forth for that day? Yani, that we have to have some level of, of introspection and to think about that. And our Prophet والسلام, says, Inna al-abda idha akhta'a khati'atan. If a, if a servant of Allah Azza wa Jal commits a sin, nukitat fi qalbihi nuktatan sawda. Yani, there's going to be a black dot that is put on the heart. So what happens if a person, if those dots keep adding up, then the heart dies because it's covered. It's covered. But the Prophet ﷺ told us the remedy for that. فَإِذَا نَزَعَ فَإِذَا نَزَعَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ وَتَابْ سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ But if he stops doing that sin, نَزَعَ, he stops. وَاسْتَغْفَرَ He seeks Allah Azza wa Jal's forgiveness. وَتَاب يعني He repents to Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning that he has that firm determination not to go back to that sin. سُقِي لَقَلْبُ then, then his heart is going to be polished. The, the, the dark spots are going to be removed and he's going to be polished. But how do you get there? How do you get to the point where you leave it off and you seek his forgiveness and you repent? You have to think about the fact that you are doing something that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is part of the muhasaba. Right, that we are taking account of ourselves, and that's number two. Number three, and perhaps I'll stop at this point because I mean, sometimes too much information means that we can't implement any of it. But it is mujahadatun nafs, that you really have to strive. You really have to strive to do what Allah has, what Allah has commanded us to do and to stay away from his prohibitions. It's not something that we can take lightly. We want a heart that is that is pure for Allah Azza wa Jal, we can't keep hearing Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Aminu in the Quran and we just turn away like we didn't hear it. Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Aminu. Read those verses when Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us what to do. He's telling us what to believe. He's telling us what to say. Then we have to take that. Khudu ma ataynakum bi quwah. And take it strongly. And implement that. Implement that in your life. And that takes striving. Allah says, those who strive, those who strive in our path, or those who strive for our sake, then we will guide them to our paths. But it takes striving from us. Let's not think that this is going to be an easy road or that it's something that doesn't require some effort. Maybe that's the better way to put it. Because anything can be easy if Allah makes it easy. 
but it does require some effort from you, just like everything else you wanted in your life you worked for. Like everything else you wanted. SubhanAllah, and it could be something as trivial as wanting to win a video game. Your child will spend six hours so that they can get to the point where they win. Just to say what? What did they get out of that? Absolutely nothing except for a waste of time. But they got to say they won. Six hours, 12 hours, 24. Put so much to anything that you've wanted in your life, you put the time and effort into. So it's going to take time and effort to get a heart that is salim. And our Prophet Isaiah Salatu was saying, from those things immediately that we can implement. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ukhbirukum. بِمَا يُذْهِبُوا وَحَرَ sadr Shall I not inform you of that which will remove the impurities of the heart? وَحَرَ sadr it, it actually means the spite and the malice that, that a person has in their hearts. قَالُوا بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said, sure, certainly inform us of what it is that removes that. قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ صِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ مِنْ كُلِّ شَهَرٍ to fast three days out of every month. Fast three days out of every month. We got Ramadan coming up anyway in, in 60 days, about. Approximately. 60 days from now. And we're going to be fasting, inshallah, ta'ala, for an entire month. If you can fast for an entire month, you can fast for three days out of every month. And it's something that the Prophet Sallallahu said will remove that spite and that envy and that malice from our hearts and it's part of striving to get to the point where we have a heart that is pure. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبَ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُونْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِيَخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُنَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم إنا نسألك إن اللهم إنا نسألك قلوبا سليمة اللهم إنا نسألك قلوبا سليمة We ask Allah عز وجل for pure and sound hearts we ask him to make us from amongst the Fa'izin, Yomid Deen, 